Okay, this is the continuation of our discussion or the items for our English review. So let's start. Okay, number 86, what is the usual ending of a comedia? A, victory of Muslim. B, death of the queen. C, victory of Christians. D, death of the prince. So what is your choice? What is the usual ending of a comedia? So let us see victory of Christians. In a comedia, the conversion always takes before the marriage, which punctuates the ending of the performance and firmly ratified status quo. In this way, the foreign lover, male or female, has performed a transformative act that linked the travel through the Mediterranean Sea to conversion. Cartography has opened the door to spiritual conversion, thus, while the frame remains comic for the young lovers who symbolize the future, the identification with Christianity has been maintained in the performance. All right. So the answer for this item is letter C, victory of the Christians. So what is the usual ending of a comedia? The answer is a victory of the Christians, letter C. Okay, so next we have num item number 87. What is the English translation of Rabindranath Tagore's Jitanhali? All right. A, Patriotic Hymns. B, Song of Songs. C, Songs Offerings. B, or D, Devotional Song. All right, so what is the English translation? So, English translation of Rabindranath Tagore's Jitanjali. So, remember the word Jitanjali. So, the answer is song or songs of offerings, letter C. So, the English Jitanjali or song offerings is a collection of 103 poems of Tagore's own English translations of the Binjali or Binjali poems first published in November 1912 by the India Society of London. So, the answer is song offerings about the Jitanjali. Okay, so let's proceed now to item number 88. Which of the following best describe the reader's theater? Okay, best describe the reader's theater. A, readers do a lot of action. B, long hours are spent rehearsing. C, students do not memorize their parts. D, the theater requires elaborate props and costumes. So again, the question is which of the following best describes the reader's theater. Okay, so remember that this is a reader's theater. So what's your choice? Okay, so letter C, students do not memorize their parts. Why? It's because of the word reader. Describe the reader's theater. All right. So let's find out. Reader's theater is a school activity in which a presenter reads in front of an audience. So the presenter only reads in front of an audience. Similar to theater, the presenter reads the scripts with expressions, emotions, and voice modulation. But in the contrast with a theater, the presenter doesn't learn his or her lines. The presenter performs the play by using nonverbal communication, example, voice, facial expression, and gestures. In a reader's theater, there is no need for sets, costumes, or other props. So, A is yes, but more salient with theater plays. B, yes, but just like with any performance, then D, 
no. So the answer is students do not memorize their parts for the reader's theater. Okay, so number 89, genomic verses are the earliest form of literacy expression during the pre-colonial part in Philippine literature, which is not an example of genomic verse. Okay, so which is not an example of the genomic verse. So I think we're not really familiar with the genomic verse, but let's find out. Okay, so our choices are A, fable, D, legend, C, riddle, D, folktale. So the answer for this item is letter A, fable. Okay, so because which is not an example of genomic verse, so I think we do not really understand what is the genomic verse. So let's find out. And our answer for this is A, feeble is not an example of the genomic verse. All right, so the word genomic verse, because we do not really understand what is this word or this uh, genomic verse, so comes from genomi. Okay, so again, comes from genomi, meaning dwarf. The geno genomic verse or verses, therefore, are poetic lines which are short and compressed. Okay, so these are the poetic line and it is a short and compressed. So examples of which in the Philippines lit literature are riddles or the bugtong, epigrams, maxims, proverbs, bulong or the chants, saying kasabihan, tanaga or myths, oral literature, metrical tales, and folk songs. All right, so letter C, riddles are obvious examples of genomic verses. B, legends as well as folktale are closely related to myths, which is an example of a genomic verse. So therefore, the answer is A, fable. Okay, so let's proceed to item number 90. So which language system is focused on vocabulary? Okay, so which language system is focused on vocabulary? A, semantics. B, syntactic. C, pragmatic. D, phonological. So remember the word vocabulary. Okay, so this is our keyword, and the answer for this item is letter A, semantics. Okay, why semantics? Because the study of the meanings of words, okay, meaning of words and phrases in language. So when we say meaning of words, so we are referring to the vocabulary symbols or the vocabulary. So, the study of the meanings of words and phrases in language refers to the meaning of the vocabulary symbols. So, this one. And for letter B, syntactic, are concerned with the way in which linguistic elements, such as words, are put together to form constituents, such as phrases, and closest grammatical structures. And for letter C, we have the pragmatic. So pragmatic studies the ways in which context contribute to meaning. Example, speech act theory and conversational implicature. So for our letter D, this is phonological. So when we say Phonological, it is a study of sound patterns and their meanings both within and across languages. So in short, letter A is a vocabulary, letter B is grammar because syntactic, then 
letter C is context, the pragmatic. And letter D is the phonological is sound. All right. So obviously the answer for this item, which language system is focused on vocabulary, is a semantics. So let's proceed now to item number 91. The following are Elizabethan playwrights who does not belong to the group. Okay, Elizabethan playwrights who does not belong to the group. A, we have Johnson. B, Dante. C, Shakespeare. D, Marlowe. So, Elizabethan playwrights who does not belong to the group. And the answer here is letter B, Dante. Oh, there you go. There you go. So Dante. So Elizabethan plays and playwrights were extremely popular during the Elizabethan era. And many of their plays are still performed today. The most famous of the Elizabethan playwrights was William Shakespeare. Okay. William Shakespeare is the famous or the famous of the Elizabethan playwrights. Other famous ones were Ben Johnson, so it is the Volpon, the Silent Woman, and the Alchemist. Okay, so again, Ben Johnson. Next, we have letter D, Christi Christopher Marlowe, or Dr. Paostos. Okay, so for the Dr. Paostos, rather. And only D, Dante Alghieri, was not included because he belongs to the late Middle Ages. Okay, so our answer for this item is letter D, Dante Alghieri. Okay, so remember the following are Elizabethan playwrights who does not belong to the group. So the answer is Dante. Okay, so let's have item number 92. Which play of Jose M. Hernandez tells of, an, tells of an artisan who forged cannons for use of the Spaniards? A. We have here the Panday Pera. Next is letter B, the real leader. Letter C, the Filipino or Pil Filipino rebel. And letter D, the cry of the Philippines. So, what's our answer for this? So, remember that switch play of Jose M. Hernandez tells of an artisan who forged cannons for the use of the Spaniards. And the answer here is letter C, this one. Letter C, the Panday Pera of Jose M. Hernandez. Okay, so Jose M. Hernandez. Okay, there you go. Jose M. Hernandez. Okay, this one. All right. So, Panday Pera is a play written by Jose Maria Hernandez. Okay. Remember that Panday Pera is written by Maria Jose Hernandez. It is a story of a Pampango Indio blacksmith who is acknowledged as the first Filipino canon maker. Okay, so another is about Jose Maria Hernandez is the first Filipino canon maker. Okay, this one, the first Filipino canon maker and about how he managed to work as a blacksmith during the time of Raja Suleiman and Governor General Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. Okay, so Panday Pera and written by Jose Maria Hernandez. Okay, so number 93, what figure of speech is used in the sentence below? I cried a million times for you. So, I cried a million times for you. What figure of speech is used? In the sentence A, hyperbole, B, simile, 
C personification dimethapur. Okay, so the answer for this item is hyperbole because simile is describing using the word like or as personification and metaphor. Okay, so when we say a hyperbole, it is an expression uses exaggeration for the sake of emphasis. I have a million things to do. Okay, so this is a hyperbole and this is also the correct answer for our question and in the sentence to show the heartache of the person the person may use exaggerated words to prove his or her point no one can cry a million times for someone in its literal sense for la our letter b simile figures of speech comparing to unlike things that is often introduced by like or as example cheeks like roses so we have here the word like so because simile is using the word like or as okay so next is personification figure of speech in in which a thing an idea or an animal is given human attributes okay so given human attributes for the personification so figure of speech in which a thing an idea or an animal is given human attributes so when we say human attributes for example cats cry okay so human attributes here or human activities is cry so the cats cry okay so while metaphor for our choice letter d an expression that describes a person or object by referring to something that is considered to possess similar characteristics no as or like okay so you are the sun Again, an expression that describes a person or object by referring to something that is considered to possess similar characteristic. Okay, but remember that without using the word as or like in describing a person having similar characteristics. All right, so I think this item is clear enough so our answer for this is letter a hyperbole all right i cried a million times for you is a hyperbole so next we have item number 94 identify the poem from which the quote nevermore is taken a ola loma a ballad B. Lenore. C. The Slipper. D. The Raven. Okay. So identify the poem from which quote Nevermore is taken. Okay. So the answer for this is letter A or letter D rather. The Raven. So again, identify the poem from which the quote Nevermore. Okay. So Nevermore is equivalent to the raven okay so remember nevermore the raven all right so in edgar allen poe's 18th stanza poem the raven the line quote the raven nevermore comes in toward the middle and gets repeated or the word nevermore gets repeated in the subsequent stanzas here are some lines from the poem then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decor decorum continence it wore through my crest be shorn and shaven though i said art sure no craven ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the night is sure tell me what the lord thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore 
quote the river Raven Nevermore. All right. So I'm not really familiar with this uh poem, the Raven. So but the answer for this question identify the poem from which the quote nevermore is taken is the raven. Okay. So just always remember for the quote nevermore is from the raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, let's let's have number ninety-five in the curing system. This is about vocabulary and coming up with meanings in a blank. Okay, in the curing system, this is about vocabulary and coming up with meanings in a blank. A, syntax. B, simile. D, a C, semantics. D, morphology. Okay, so the right answer in this item is semantics so as item number on the previous item we have also there an answer semantics because semantics is the study of meanings so we have here in the current system this is about the vocabulary and coming up with meanings so about the vocabulary and coming up with meanings is our keyword here so let's proceed to the rationale syntax concerned with the way in which linguistic elements such as words are put together to form constituents such as phrases and clauses. Okay, so this is syntax. Okay, so simile. Yes, we know that what is a simile, a figure of speech comparing to unlike things, that is often introduced by like or as. And semantics, the study of the meanings of words. All right, there you go. This is what we are looking for. Study of the meanings of words, that is semantics. All right. So, and phrases in language refers to the meaning of the vocabulary symbols and morphology the study and description of how words are formed in a language. Example, inflection, derivation, and compounding. Okay, so in the curing system, this about vocabulary and coming up with meanings. So again, the answer is semantics. All right, so next. Item number 96. This period is considered as the golden age of the Filipino language. Okay. So, golden age of the Filipino language. So, sometimes this question is being found on the general education or professional education. All right. So, Again, this period is considered as the golden age of the Filipino language. All right, so remember for this keyword, golden age of the Filipino language. So the answer for this item is letter D, Japanese regime. All right, so between 1941 to 1945, Philippine literature was interrupted in its development when we were again conquered by another foreign country, Japan. Philippine literature in English then came to a halt. Tagalog was favored by the Japanese military authority and writing in English was consigned to a limbo. Japanese were able to influence and encourage the Filipino in developing the vernacular literature. Thus, Filipino literature was given a break during this period. So it is the Japanese regime is the golden age of the Filipino language. Okay, so for item number 97, the problem that I encountered was blank for me to handle. Okay, too much. B, so much. C, very much. D, two more. 
Okay? So, the problem that I encountered was blank for me to handle. A, too much. B, so much. C, very much. Then D, two more. Okay. So, too much. You cannot say so much. You cannot say very much for me to handle. You cannot say two more for me to handle, but too much to handle. Okay? Too much to handle. All right. There you go. Too much. Okay. So, too much to handle. Okay. I don't know how to write this one. Okay. Too much for me to handle. All right. So, the words to, so, okay. Again, the words to, so, and very are degree modifiers. Generally speaking, so and very have positive meanings. To, on the other hand, shows negative extremes, just like in the example sentence. The problem was to a higher degree than desired. Two or extremely negative to be handled. Letter D, two more is incorrect and superlative or comparative. Okay, number 98. If divine comedy is characterized by the absolute faith in a single truth, which of the following is the characteristic of Bucasius de Cameron? A. Characteristics of merchant class. class B. An equally devout reference for this truth. C. Complete neg negation of Christian doctrine. D. A sexual libertinism that seeks to receive the great pleasure of ancient room. Okay, the answer for this is letter C, a complete negation of Christian doctrine. Okay, in Bucasius Bicameron, religion is a favorite topic of mockery. Most of the religious characters are abbots, nuns, priests, friars, or monks who trick the men and women of the nobilas into the following their schemas or schemes be it sex or money or other goals the decameron definitely takes a humorous and critical approach to describing the clergy in action clergy members are only human and often possessed little morality and zealous carnal desires Besides Christianity, there is mention of Jud or Judaism and the Muslim faith and corresponding characters. Okay, so for number 99, not all ids or idis in verbs sound alike with which id is different. She signed a contract. B, she wanted a chaperon. C. She was not granted an audience. D. She failed to get the needed answer. Okay, for this item, number 99 is bonus. All right, so D. Wanted, D. Needed. All right, and this is the pronunciation of ED or ED. Okay, P. Help, K. Look. F, sniff, G, it's lap, washed, watch, kissed, danced, fixed. And for the D or the, cold, cleaned, offered, damaged, love, used, amazed, rub, and tamed. Okay. So B and C, I, B and C, D, A and D. But for the sake of answering this, since there should be no item left unanswered, one could just choose A and the basis is the sequence of the last letters in the alphabet. Okay, for item 100, which sentence uses a preposition improperly? The witness was barely in time for the affair. P. The, uh, the accident happened on his birthday. Letter C, she came on attend the hearing. D, tell her to be on time. 
So the answer is letter C, she came on attempt the hearing. Okay, so this is now our last item. And for the rationale of our answer, letter C, she came on attempt the hearing. All of the following exhibits, the proper use of repositions, except for C, she came on attend the hearing. On should be two. All right, so uh, this is the end of our discussion for questions 85 to 100. And let's continue in the next session of items 101 F to 150 for the English Majorship Review.